Okay, this is the final piece to Alpine's 2022 5 Series head units. With the new Halos released just a few months ago, Alpine just released the 7-inch double-din model with the same software and features of its two big brothers, the ILX F509 and the F511. So let's take a close look at Alpine's 7-inch double-din multimedia head unit, the ILX507. Hey, it's Josh from Breaker Stereo and Performance. Now, welcome to the channel that reviews, demos, and goes over all the latest in aftermarket auto accessories like audio, performance, suspension, and more because we don't drop stock. So make sure you subscribe to this channel to stay on top of what's new in this industry. A little late to be releasing a 2022 model anything, but in the car audio world, it is not uncommon for head units to be released in the middle of the year but a wait for a unit like this is worth it. As mentioned, it has the same software and features as the F509 and the F511, which are Alpine's nine inch and 11 inch head units. And if you didn't catch the video on those units, don't worry, we're gonna cover all the features that these radios have to offer here. So those two models are floating screens, and when you install them, they stick out a little bit from the dash. If you're looking for a more traditional flush double-din route, then this is a great option, especially for the current price, which is $749, but of course that is subject to change. Now you can pick up other double-din radios with similar features like wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, HDMI input for about the same price. But with the Alpine, this radio has some unique features at this price point such as HDMI outputs to link an additional rear view monitor, left and right and front and rear equalization for more accurate staging, and a high res screen, 1280 by 720. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna go over all the features, do an unboxing and give a quick demonstration. Then we'll go over the pros and cons list along with our overall rating. We're also gonna add a section called things not listed on the box where we talk about either features or functionality that isn't listed anywhere, but we've come to find out through our customers or through ourselves by experience. Okay, let's kick it off with the features. Now this is a digital multimedia head unit receiver with AM FM tuner and does not play disc. It has a seven inch capacitive touchscreen, high res 1280 by 720. Now this fits in a double DIN opening, has HD tuner built in, Bluetooth for both calling and audio streaming. Now, as mentioned before, Apple CarPlay wired and wireless and Android Auto also wired and wireless. Audio video features includes MP3 playback, WMA, AAC, APE, and FLAC music files. It also plays AVC, FLV, MP4, MPEG4, and MOV video files plays lossless FLAC audio files up to 96 kilohertz, 24-bit D-to-A converter, which takes your digital music and converts it to analog. So typical CD is 16-bit and high-res does about 24 bits. So this head unit is capable of 24-bit and 96 kilohertz. This has a 13-band parametric EQ, both front, rear, and left and right, six-channel time correction, high and low pass filters, Alpine's proprietary base engine SQ, and multi-expander HD. Okay, inputs include two rear USB inputs, a rear HDMI input, rear auxiliary inputs, and two camera inputs, which are through RCAs. As far as outputs are concerned, we have that HDMI output that we talked about earlier, six channel pre-outs, four volts, front, rear, and subwoofer. Built-in internal amplifier, 16 watts times four RMS or 50 watts times four peak. Now this works with the Series XM tuner, SXV300 sold separately and compatible with most steering wheel control adapters. Adapters sold separately. Also, this is iDataLink Maestro RR and RR2 compatible. Now the iDataLink Maestro adapter will retain factory features like engine display, AC controls, climate controls, and more. Okay, so now let's get into a section called things not listed on the box. Now this unit has an internal light sensor which dims the display based on the brightness outside, similar to your cell phone. So there used to be an orange dimmer wire that used to hook up that would tie directly into your dimmer. So if you turned up or down the dimmer, it would adjust accordingly. Okay, the boot time is about eight seconds or so and the wireless CarPlay connects in about 15 seconds. 
All right, so let's talk about the camera input. So even though the screen is a 720p, the inputs are not AHD, which stands for analog high definition. It will upscale if you are using an HD camera, but don't expect it to be true 720 if you buy an HD camera. We did a split screen with the HD camera versus a standard camera, and there is a difference between the two. So I would definitely recommend spending an extra few bucks on an HD camera, because it's really not that big of a difference in price. Okay, let's talk about the parking brake features. Now we haven't touched on that subject on this channel before, but we'll briefly discuss it. Now when installing a head unit with a screen, there is a wire that you can hook up to the parking brake, and that will allow full access to the radio's menu and video viewing features. Now for Kenwood and JVC, also Sony, all you have to do is engage the parking brake to unlock the radio. And when the parking brake is engaged, it will send a ground to the radio on that wire. For Alpine, you must engage the parking brake, release it, and re-engage it to unlock it. Now, if you're using this radio in a place that's not viewable to the driver, like the cabin in a boat, or a living area in an RV or camper, then radios like the JVC, Kenwood, or Sony, you would simply ground the parking brake wire. And with the Alpine radios, because of the engage, disengage, engage feature, you could buy a part made by pack called the TR1. Now that's designed to bypass the feature for applications that we just mentioned. But if you're installing this in the dash of your vehicle, you're not gonna wanna do that for safety reasons. Also keep track of the firmware that's on the unit. Now when Alpine releases a new radio, they tend to be on top of fixing any bugs that might pop up as soon as they're in the field. So the firmware that comes on the new radio might need to be updated by the time it makes it into your car. Now normally they work the bugs out in the first few months, so you don't have to worry about updating your head unit all the time. But if your radio gets a little buggy at any point, just make sure you have the latest firmware installed. Okay, let's do unboxing. Manual and product registration. And here are all our cables. So let's take a look. We have a trim ring, GPS antenna when you're using your navigation through your smartphone, separate Bluetooth mic. All right, we have our main harness. And then here it is our camera inputs. We have front and rear camera inputs here. Along with that, you do have an adapter here because these are designed for Alpine's proprietary camera, but you do get the adapter so you can use whatever camera you want. RCA pre-outs, front, rear, and subwoofer, mounting hardware here. And then we've got our last harness, which is the microphone input. Also a oh, steering wheel remote input. Okay, all right. Now let's take a look at the actual unit. Okay, so this is basically a single DIN on the bottom, as you can see, shaped as an L. All right, so this will mount like any old regular standard double DIN radio, not a problem. All right, it will work in some special applications. I wanna say, I think there's like a Mazda three or six. This radio will only work in that vehicle. But anyway, let's take a look here. So as you can see on the buttons on the bottom, they do step out a little bit. All right, so there is a, it's on a different plane than the screen, so it's not just a flat screen with buttons. All right, so here you have your mic, which is gonna activate your Siri or your Google Assist, volume up and down, mute. All right, this button here probably takes you to your audio menu, that would be my guess. Then you have this little matrix here, and that's gonna be your menu. Then you have access to your camera, track up and down, and then this is cool, it's got a button that's got navigation. So when you have your phone plugged in, you hit the navigation button, that'll take you directly to your Apple Maps or Google Maps. So on the back, you have two USBs. Uh, one is for your smartphone, and one is for just USB input, so you can use a thumb drive to play music or video back from. Things I wanna talk about are the HDMI input, and then also your HDMI output. We did cover that briefly. So if you have a monitor in the rear that has an HDMI in, uh, you can simply attach your HDMI cable to this and then play movies or stream video through the screen. It'll show up on the screen here, and then it'll video out to your rear view monitor. Okay, and the last thing I wanna talk about is the uh, Sirius XM tuner input here. Okay, this is our main menu now. Let me just jump right into this really quick. Now, if you go into setup, if those are too small for you, you can go to home screen type and do enhanced text. 
all right? And hands text is gonna make it larger. And then from here, you would just need to swipe in order to get to all of your sources and options. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the audio features. Now, if I tap this button here on top, that will bring us to our audio features menu here. You have balance and fade. Uh, you have the media expander, your EQ setup, crossover, and then your Alpine SQ, and also your time correction. All right, so let's talk about media expander really quick. Uh, so the media expander is designed by Alpine. This is proprietary to their software. And what this does is it enhances compressed music and it fills in some of the gaps that compressed music will have to make the files smaller. You have a couple different adjustments on it. So you can have it off, you can go one, two, and then you can go three. So just listen to the music and see what one will work best for you. Let's just jump over to bass. All right, so the bass engine SQ is basically like an equalizer, okay, that Alpine has again, proprietary to Alpine software. And then, you know, again, just listen to it and see what's gonna sound best for you. Now, the only thing is with Base Engine SQ is you cannot use the equalizer if you do that. So this is essentially the equalizer that you'll be using. All right, so if you wanted to use that, you have a couple different settings. Um, you have standard and you have different levels, okay? And then you also have mid bass, rich, and low bass, and then punch, all right? I'm gonna leave it off right now. That way we can go ahead and go into the equalizer. So let's go ahead and go into there. And here, as you can see, we have basically five EQs. You have your front left, front right, rear left, rear right, and also a subwoofer, okay? Now having left and right EQ is really important when you want to really fine tune your sound stage. Because what happens is this, is your left speaker may not be playing the same frequencies as your right speaker because of the environment, because of the speaker, your left speaker is closer to you and your right speaker is further to you and you have different parts of the upholstery and the way, the seat, the panels, you know, there's a lot of things going on, but we have covered this before in the past. All right, so basically you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 bands of equalization for your front, left, your front right, your rear left, your rear right. So these are all independent from each other. And then you also have a four band equalizer for your subwoofer. So lots and lots of ways to tweak your system within this unit. Not to mention it is a parametric EQ. You can pick the frequency in which you wanna boost, boost it, and also you can pick the Q. All right, so that is gonna make the frequency either narrow, medium, or wide. As you can see, we also have different crossovers for the front, left, front, right, rear left, rear right, and also the subwoofer. And there's lots of frequencies in here in which you can choose. Also, you're able to choose the slope um, from six to 24 dB. Here's your time correction. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure from the middle of the speaker to the driver's side headrest to each according speaker, and that will either slow down or speed up the sound, thus giving you the illusion that you're sitting in the middle of the vehicle and also bringing the staging up higher to the dash. On this menu, you have your bass and treble as well. So let's say you're listening to some music and you got a little too much bass, you can just go ahead and back it down a little bit. Or if you need a little more highs, you can you know, turn that up. So you have that ability as well. Okay, obviously we have Apple CarPlay. All right, you guys are all familiar with this. I'm not really gonna go into it, but you do have your mapping there, which is nice. So let's say for instance, you're listening to the radio and you wanna go to navigation, just simply tap the navigation button. That takes you directly to the navigation. And it looks like it goes right to Google Maps. Okay, so right now, obviously I'm on an iPhone and I hit navigation and as you can see, I'm on Google Maps. Okay, this obviously does Android Auto as well. So let's go ahead and plug in an Android. All right, so as you guys already know, you don't necessarily need to have it plugged in. This does wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. All right, so here's our Android Auto screen. If you hit that button, that takes you to your menu. From here, you can choose your music app, text apps, navigation apps, all from here. All right, let's get back into the radio. Okay, HDMI input. So obviously we got an HDMI input, so you can use your smartphone to mirror and stream Netflix, Hulu, things of that nature. Because it's directly through an HDMI cable, you're not gonna have any restrictions that you would if you had like Miracast or Android mirroring. You're going directly into the unit through the HDMI cable. Okay, let's go into setup really quick. And what I wanna cover is this. Under system, you're able to control things from here. You have microphone, language, clock adjust, screen, lighting, dimmer levels, things of that nature, uh, installation status. Uh, this gives you your camera, if it's known what kind it is, Maestro module, Sirius XM, let you know if your GPS antenna is hooked up, 
the parking brake is engaged, things of that nature, uh, battery voltage. And then here you can see what software you have. So we touched a little bit upon that earlier. Right now we're running the 1.1.260 software. That is the most current software. I just went to Alpine's website right now. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to kb.alpine-usa.com. On there, you're able to see what software is currently available for your unit. Just go into the search bar. In this case, you would just type in ILX-507. And then if there is a software update, it will populate after you hit search. And if it's not the most current software, then simply download it on a thumb drive and then you would update it that way. Now they will give you instructions on how to actually do that, but it's a pretty simple process. You know, but all together, it's got a really bright screen, very high pixel count for a seven inch monitor, 1280 by 720. That's really good for a seven inch monitor. And I do like the buttons on the bottom that you're able to get to fairly quickly. So you have obviously your volume and your track up and down, the camera and the navigation buttons are all really great buttons to have at your fingertips. Okay, pros and cons, lots of pros here. Wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. All the great audio features like left and right, front and rear EQing, six channel time alignment, four volt pre-outs, and the 24 bit DDA to converter. HDMI in and output. 1280 by 720 p built-in HD tuner, iDataLink compatible. Okay, cons, none. Okay, I'm gonna give this radio a five-star review. Currently, there is no radio out there at this price point with this many features. Priced competitively versus all the other name brand radios on the market. And with the name Alpine behind it, it's a radio you're sure to enjoy for many, many years. Like always, if you're interested in this radio, there is a link in the description below taking you directly to the product page. Remember, we do have financing available. Simply add to cart, pick a financing option, get approved, and then we'll send your gear out to you ASAP. Okay, that'll do it. Support our channel by liking and subscribing. Once again, I'm Josh with Breaker Stereo and Performance. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Peace.